Hey there, Carol. I wanted to let you know that I'll be going to Judy's school observation day next week. My brother just called me a little bit ago and asked if I could go in your place. <laughs> what? He's sending some ugly girl like you to go in my place? Whatever, that's fine. But be sure to tell all the parents there that you are not Judy's mother, okay? <laughs> Um, let me remind you that I'm doing you the favor of going to Judy's school because neither you nor my brother can make it. Most people typically say thank you when someone does them a favor, not insult their appearance. Okay, thank you. There, I said it. My brother said that he had work that he couldn't get out of that day. Can I ask why you can't go? I'm going to a friend's wedding. A wedding? This must be a very long wedding if it's going to keep you from being able to go to Judy's school in the morning. What are you trying to say? Nothing at all. It's just, well, you never attended any of Judy's school events. The track and field day, her school play, the choir concert. You missed every single one of them. And either my brother has to go alone, or he calls me up and asks me to come along with him. Yeah, and how is that my fault? It just so happens that I have plans every time Judy has a school event. It's a total coincidence. Don't you think that you could cancel your plans and give Judy priority once in a while? I understand that you're busy, but I think it's making Judy sad that you're never at any of these events. But all the other mothers are. Get off my back. You're single and have nothing but free time on your hands, but I actually have stuff to do. She's especially sad this time, Carol. She was really, really hoping that you would come. You should have seen the look on her face when she learned you weren't coming. You are so full of it. Judy's a reasonable girl. She's not going to throw a hissy fit just because I'm not going to some stupid school event. I think she's just good at hiding how she really feels, especially from you. And I don't think it's very healthy for her to have to keep on bottling her emotions up inside like this. Eventually, all that pent-up frustration and sadness is going to burst. Hi, Carol. I just got back from Judy's school. How was it? I bet everyone was laughing their heads off at you the whole time. <laughs> like, whoa, I'd hate to be the kid that has to live with that thing for a mom. <laughs> and just think about poor Judy when she saw you walk into the classroom. Did she start crying right away or did it take a few minutes? You're partially right. A ton of people were laughing. At you. Huh? Why would they be laughing at me? More precisely, about half of the room was snickering at you, and another third or so was just shaking their heads in disgust. The rest were clearly furious at you. I could tell from the looks on their faces. What are you talking about? Everyone was talking about me at school? Yep. Why? Why would they be laughing or angry at me when I wasn't even there? Ugh, you're lying, aren't you? They were laughing at you, right? No, they were definitely talking about you. Okay, so tell me why. It's all because of the topic of the class today. The kids were giving presentations about the projects they made in art class. Oh my god, I dodged a bullet there. <laughs> Having to listen to a bunch of snotty kids drone on about their stupid art projects? <laughs> I'd rather throw myself off the roof of the school. <laughs> the projects were actually pretty incredible. It was a completely free project, so the kids were able to make anything they felt like. Judy made a picture book. A picture book? Why did she make a picture book? Well, Judy loves drawing and loves books, so she decided that she would put those two interests together and make a picture book. Wait, didn't you know that she likes to draw? Do you actually know anything about what Judy likes? Forget what she likes. Do you know anything about your own daughter? Like, at all? Of course I know what she likes. I just thought it was weird that she made a picture book for an art project, that's all. Like, don't kids usually just draw pictures or make a sculpture out of popsicle sticks for art class? Judy is a very talented girl, Carol. You really should have seen her picture book, it was fantastic. So what does this picture book have to do with me? The title was Who's With Mommy. It was quite an interesting story. That's a weird title. Wait until you hear the story. It's about a little girl who sees her mother together with a man she doesn't know. It doesn't really have a resolution or ending. It's just a bunch of scenes where the narrator sees her mom together with a strange man and talks about how she feels during each scene. That's it? That's not a story. She's been working on this project in school for months and she didn't even write a proper ending? 
Well, she is still just a child, so you'll have to excuse her for not having the skills of a professional author or illustrator. But the most interesting thing about that picture book was what inspired Judy to write it. You see, Judy wrote that picture book based on her own real experiences. Huh? So, like I said, the main character of the story is a girl who keeps seeing her mom together with a strange man. And every time she sees them together, the two are lying down on the bed together, naked. Oh, and I think this goes without saying, but the man in the story is not the girl's father. Uh, hey, wait a second. I'll spare you the trouble of thinking and spell it out for you. Judy wrote this book about catching you having an affair. Judy really is an exceptional girl. The pictures were incredibly realistic, and the main character's inner dialogue felt so raw and genuine. She went over all the finest details of each scene of the book. The time of day, the weather, the music playing in the background, everything. Are you being serious right now? Is that actually what Judy wrote in her book? The other kids in the room seemed like they weren't really sure what was going on. But let me assure you, every single one of the adults knew exactly what she was trying to say, including me. Oh no. Uh, Judy really read that book in front of the whole class and all the other parents? Yep. And you just stood there and let it happen? Why didn't you stop her? Oh my god, this, th this is awful. I am never going to be able to show my face around that school again. Do you realize what this is going to do to my reputation? The teacher did try to cut her off early and move on to the next student, but it didn't work. She just kept right on going. Judy's words were, Please, I want to read to the end of my story. Since Judy seemed so determined to finish her presentation, I stepped in and asked the teacher to let her continue. You did what? You're insane. You're, you're out of your mind, both you and Judy. You've humiliated me. I'll never hear the end of this. What is wrong with Judy writing a book like that? Where did I go wrong in raising that stinking little brat? What did we do to you? This is all your own doing. Judy did nothing wrong by making that picture book, and I did nothing wrong getting the teacher to let her finish it. You're the one who has quite possibly scarred poor Judy for life. Can you imagine how she must have felt catching you having an affair? I'm not having an affair, you moron! What is the matter with all of you? Who takes the words of some dumb child so seriously? She's making it all up. It never happened. Is that so? I don't know. Her drawings and narrations were very, very detailed. I'd say the most likely explanation is that it's all things that she saw with her own eyes and heard with her own ears. There's no other way she could have made something that detailed. I told you I am not having an affair. It's all lies. She made it up. Well, leaving that aside for now, just know that her picture book was absolutely wonderful. I'll tell my brother all about it, too. I think he'll be quite surprised, wouldn't you? In more ways than one. Wait! We can't let my husband know about something as embarrassing as this. It would be awful for me, and him too. He's better off not knowing, wouldn't you say? How about we keep what happened today as our little secret? Did you actually think I would agree to hide this from my brother? I'm telling him about everything as soon as possible. Plus, he explicitly asked me to tell him all about what happened at the school observation today. That was the whole reason I went. You don't have to tell him everything, do you? You can, you know, leave out a few minor details. He's a busy guy, too, so he doesn't have the time to listen to all the boring stuff that happened during that class. You don't need to worry about a thing. I'll give him a report for you. I'll tell him everything he needs to know. I'm not going to lie for you, Carol. I'm going to give him a full report personally, as soon as I possibly can. As a matter of fact, I think he'd love to have Judy present her picture book to him once he gets home from work tonight. Don't you dare! <laughs> Where are my husband and daughter? I can't find them anywhere. Are they with you? Oh, hello again, Carol. Did you just get home? Typically, when you go out for the day, you don't come home until very late at night. What brought you home so early today? Were you perhaps worried about what would happen when you got there? I have been trying to get a hold of my husband all day, but he's not returning any of my messages, so I hurried home. You told him about Judy's picture book, didn't you? Of course I did. No! You can't keep your big mouth shut, can you? My brother took Judy to our parents' house. Why? It's for Judy's protection. 
He didn't want her to have to witness the conversation that you're going to have very, very soon. He was getting her out of the house. What conversation? The conversation about your affair. What else could I possibly be talking about? After everything that went down today, are you really going to sit there and pretend that you have no idea why this is happening? Why are you still going on about me having an affair? Give it up already! You were cheating on my brother, weren't you, Carol? How about that wedding you were going to today? Was that all just a cover for you to see your boyfriend? Did you have a nice time together? I'm not lying. I really did go to a wedding. Okay, well then how about you send me a picture of the wedding? I'm sure you took at least one picture of the venue, decorations, food, maybe a selfie with your friend, the bride. I, uh, didn't take any. Really? Not even one single picture? Are you serious? As active on Instagram as you are, I refuse to believe that you didn't even take one picture to brag to your followers about. My phone's hard drive was full. I couldn't take any more pictures. That's why I don't have any. I see. Then give me the name of another guest at the party. Actually, I have a better idea. Give me the names of the new couple. That should be easy to do, right? And it would prove that you really did go to the wedding. Why should I? I don't have to prove anything to you. Besides, I don't want to bother the bride and groom on their wedding night. You are really determined not to tell me anything at all about this wedding you went to. Is that because there really wasn't a wedding at all? No, there was a wedding and it was really nice. You could give me the name and phone number of the wedding venue if you're concerned about the bride and groom's privacy. Call up the venue and ask if there was a wedding for a couple with the same name today. Anything at all will be fine. Just give me any piece of information I can use to verify that you were at a wedding today. Fine, fine, I give up. You're right, there was no wedding today. I was lying. I was busy with other stuff. Other stuff? I'm not going to let you get away with weasel words, Carol. You went to see your boyfriend today, didn't you? Yes. And where did the two of you go together? His place or yours? Neither. We went to an amusement park. And how long have you been seeing each other? About two years, I think. This isn't the first time you've skipped one of Judy's school events to see him, isn't it? Have you done this before? Yeah, a couple of times. Unreal. For the longest time, I was completely baffled as to why you never went to any of Judy's school events. At first, I just thought you were an uncaring, uninterested, unaffectionate mother, but now I see that you're actually somehow worse than that. This doesn't have anything to do with you. This is between me and my husband. Now that all of this is out in the open, I want you to know that I never liked you, not for one second. I tolerated you because you were my brother's wife and my niece's mother. But that is all over as of today. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. My brother contacted your parents a little bit ago. What? He called my parents? It was only a matter of time, really. It's looking more and more like a divorce is coming by the second. But why would he call my parents? It looks like they're going to come by our parents' house in the near future. My brother said he wanted to have a discussion about things between both families. I still don't get it. Why would he do that? And why isn't he talking to me about any of this? Do you honestly think that your opinion matters to anyone at this point? I shouldn't have to remind you that everything that's happening right now is 100% your fault. But he's not answering any of my texts or calls. Doesn't he want to hear my side of the story? I'm his wife. Calm down, Carol. You'll get your chance. You'll have plenty of time to give him your excuses once he gets back to your house. I don't want to talk to him in person. That's why I'm trying to get him to talk to me on the phone. What are you afraid of, Carol? Are you trying to avoid getting called out for what you did? Duh! If he took Judy all the way to your parents' house, he's probably really going to let me have it. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty safe assumption to make. But I think what's going to be the absolute worst for you is when your parents come over to talk with him and my parents. Yeah, I realize that. No, I don't think you realize anything. What do you mean? My brother is going to show Judy's picture book to your parents. What? Man, just think about how they're going to react when they hear that Judy presented that book to the whole class and all the parents. The shame and disappointment might give them both heart attacks. No, 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 that cannot happen. You have to put a stop to this. 
Why? Judy put a lot of work into that book. And she's very proud of it, too. I think it's only fair to show it to her grandparents, don't you? Are you joking? You can't let them see that! Of course I can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to my parents' house for that meeting, too. Someone's going to have to look after Judy while the adults are having their conversation. What am I going to do? I can't let my parents see that picture book. I would die of embarrassment. Uh, I've got it. You have to burn that book. Why should I? You're the only one who can. You have to find that book before your brother shows it to my parents and burn it. It should be easy. You still haven't answered the question. Why should I burn Judy's picture book for you? To protect my good name. Please, I am begging you. At this rate, my family's going to be torn to shreds and my elderly parents are going to be totally humiliated. You're not worried about them. You're worried about my brother suing you for infidelity. That, and since he's going to seek full custody of Judy, you're going to have to pay him child support. I don't want to get a divorce. What am I going to do without my husband? How am I going to get by? Where am I going to live? If you were so concerned about losing your husband, why would you go and do something as stupid as having an affair? You knew the risks going into it. Well, I mean, you know, I was bored. I wanted a little excitement in my life. I wasn't planning on getting serious about it at all when it first started. Well, you certainly got your wish then, didn't you? I bet this is the most excitement you've ever had in your life. Anyway, there's not a single reason why I should stick my neck out to help you. You've never done anything for me that would merit me doing something to get you out of the massive mess you've made for yourself. How can you be so cold to me? We're sisters, aren't we? Sisters-in-law, but still sisters. You've got to help me. I don't need any sister who would call me ugly. You've treated me with nothing but scorn for as long as I've known you. And now, after all of that, you want me to betray my own brother and help you cover up your affair from your parents? I'm sorry about everything. I'm sorry for calling you ugly. It was all just a joke. I was just teasing you, that's all. Your idea of a joke is telling me that Judy would cry from embarrassment if I came to her school observation day? Yes, that was all one long, elaborate joke. I don't really think you're ugly. It was irony. You're actually really beautiful. So I thought it would be hilarious if I called you ugly because you're not ugly. Get it? Funny, right? I see. Irony. So you actually think I'm beautiful then? I'd like to hear it directly from your mouth. Tell me about how beautiful I am. You're gorgeous. Uh, your clothes are so stylish. Your makeup is perfect and your hair, it's, it's so silky and shiny. I am super jealous of your looks. Is that so? Yes, you're beautiful. So listen, if you do me a little favor and burn that picture book for me, I will do anything you ask me to do. Anything? Hmm, that's pretty tempting. I will work to repay you for as long as I live. I will never forget your kindness. And I'll never be a jerk to you or call you ugly ever again. Hmm, as tempting as your offer is, I still couldn't bring myself to destroy the book that Judy worked so hard to make. I think I'd like her to be able to show her grandparents the product of her hard work, too. I think they'll also be impressed that their granddaughter turned out to be such an impressive girl, despite her mother being an amoral harlot. Carol's parents came by my parents' house a few days after that. And the day before that, I heard a knock at my door, and who should show up but the star of the show herself, Carol. I was wondering what in the world she could possibly want at this point, but she got right down on her knees and started begging me to burn Judy's picture book. Unfortunately for her, the book was already in my brother's possession, so it was already too late for her to do anything about it. After the meeting, Carol and her parents walked out of the room with an absolutely horrendous look on their faces. Carol's father grabbed her by the hair, forced her down on her knees, and told her to confess to every single thing she did to betray my brother and apologize. Shortly after that, my brother divorced Carol. Due to her affair, Carol was left penniless after the divorce, and her parents disowned her and told her never to contact them again. Since her story has made its way around town, I doubt Carol will be able to stay around here for much longer. She'll have to move somewhere else. Judy is the same happy little girl as she always was, and still goes to school with a smile on her face. It seems like the other parents felt so bad for Judy after she made her presentation in class that day that they refrained from gossiping about Carol. They also felt sorry for my brother, too, obviously, so they've never brought it up to him at all. 
I've also taken on a bigger role in my niece's life than I did before. Oh, and as for that picture book, I don't think they're ever going to throw it away. I asked my brother what he did with it, and he told me that he put it in a box way in the back of his closet. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.